and you'll never see that you're being used. And these guys are specialists at creating big groups. If they don't create it, they'll take it over because they love it. Why not? It's already ready-made for you. Put your man at the top. You control the minds of thousands, sometimes millions. Professor Quigley was the man who picked lots of people to be Rhodes Scholars and send them off to Oxford, England. Bill Clinton was one of them, only one of them. There's many of them. What does Quigley say about left wing, right wing, and so on? In his own book, Tragedy and Hope, on page 949, he describes how the left wing will see what's happening in the world through all the big movements and blame the communists. He'll, he'll, he'll go into the other side too and how the, the, the other side will see the right wing controlling things. And he goes on in 950 to say this, this myth like all fables does in fact have a modicum of truth. It does exist and has existed for a generation an international anglophile network. And I'll, and I'll continue this, it's very important after this break. I'm Alan Watt, and this is Cutting Through the Matrix. Just discussing a little bit from Tragedy and Hope by Professor Carl Quigley. And he's discussing how the right wing will blame the left wing for what they see happening in their culture, and vice versa for the other wing. You see, if you belong to a group, you're being manipulated. 950, page 950. This guy who studied the records of the Council on Foreign Relations says this, this is this myth, like all fables, does in fact have a modicum of truth. Remember, he was a historian for them. He would enter their, their records department. It does exist and has existed for a generation an international Anglophile network which operates to some extent in the way the radical right believes the Communists act. In fact, this network, which we may identify as the round table groups, has no aversion to cooperating with the communists or any other groups and frequently does so. In fact, it loves groups, you see. It says, I know of the operations of this network because I have studied it for 20 years and was permitted for two years in the early 60s to examine its papers and secret records. It says, I have no aversion to it or to most of its aims and have for much of my life been close to it, you're darn right it was, and to many of its instruments. I have objected both in the past and recently to a few of its policies, notably to the belief that England was an Atlantic rather than a European power and must be allied or even federated with the United States and must remain isolated from Europe. And that's all altered because the real plan was to for a global establishment. But in general, my chief difference of opinion is that it wishes to remain unknown and I believe its role in history is significant enough to be known. The roundtable groups have already mentioned in this, in this book several times, notably in connection with the formation of the British Commonwealth. The British Commonwealth was to be the nucleus, since it was already established, of a new world order. A new world order widely discussed, in fact, the League of Nations and the setting up of the United Nations. They would use the, the existing British Commonwealth as, as the setup, the, the model, and it would expand it to be a global system. It says, the American branch of this organization, sometimes called the Eastern Establishment, has played a very significant role in the history of the United States in the last generation. The roundtable groups were semi-secret discussion and lobbying groups organized by Lyon Curtis, Philip Kerr, who was Lord Lothian in Britain. Lord Lothian, by the way, who was head of the Royal Institute for International Affairs in Britain, was who... Mr. Hess visited when he took the Messerschmitt over to Britain to ask why they'd double-cross Germany. It says, uh, this was done on behalf of Lord Milner, the dominant trustee of the Rhodes Trust, in the two decades before, up to 1925. The original purpose of these groups was to seek to federate the English-speaking world along lines laid down by Cecil Rhodes and William T. Stead and the money for the organizational work came originally from the Rhodes Trust, the Rhodes Foundation, merged with the Milner Trust and Foundation, and then it became the Royal Institute for International Affairs. 
the American branch is the Council on Foreign Relations, set up by a member, Mr. Pratt. And they've been running the system and been behind the wars ever since. They had the parallel government that Mrs. Thatcher said she now belonged to. I'll be back with more tomorrow. So from Hamish and myself, it's good night from Interior Canada. And may your God or your gods go with you.